So I'm going to be honest with you all. I kind of changed my whole presentation last night. And no, it wasn't because I left for the last minute or because I was not thinking about it. It was because it just didn't seem right. Now, let me explain why, why, why I'm saying it didn't seem right. So when we start a presentation like this, we're supposed to give a inspirational quote, and I Googled inspiration environmental quotes, or we're supposed to share relevant stats or challenge the audience and give them a question to leave them thinking as you're giving your presentation. But even though I tried it, nothing really seemed right. I thought, what if I'm just like, I don't know, honest? <laughs> and my honesty is I'm confused. So when I'm trying to share, uh, when I try to share some numbers, what, what I'm saying is just like, I'm, I'm showing you a number right there, but it doesn't show the history and what's behind that. And when we talk about the environment, a number is not going to portray the system and the inequalities that are behind that number. They're not going to be able to completely show why that number is like that. And for me, that's just not fair. See, as I learned this summer, it is not until we solve these inequalities, these social inequalities, that we're going to be able to completely solve the environmental issues that we're facing. But anyway, reuse, reduce, recycle. The three R's, as they're known, guided my whole sustainability path as I was growing up. And while I don't deem this word as useless uh, right now, I really know that they're not nearly enough. Now, I've come a long way since, since those days, and I, I still think individual action is great, but I think we all know that it's not nearly enough. But this talk is not really about me, about my childhood, and not really about my work this summer. It is important, but that's not really what I want to get through here. When you leave this place, I want to leave you with three things. One, a sense of urgency. Two, a willingness to act. And three, maybe some hope. I was fortunate enough to enter for the Environmental Defense Fund this summer. And for those of you who don't know, if someone doesn't know, EDF, as we call it, is one of the biggest and most, um, most influential NGOs, environmental NGOs around the world. Why is this important? Well, because I was exposed to different environmental problems throughout the whole world. And not only that, I was, I was exposed to the, uh, to the inequities that these problems have. Now, as part of uh, EDF, I worked on the Clean Air Initiative. And what this means is that I was able to partner with very cool people with a lot of nice backgrounds, a lot of experience, uh, working on the same goal, helping us breathe clean air. Now, I'll give you some of the stats that I talked about. So, 9 in 10 people breathe polluted air. 7 million people each year uh, die due to air pollution related disease, and that number is just going up. Air pollution has an impact on mental health, worker productivity, and yes, even the stock market. Air pollution takes, on average, two years off of life expectancy. But like I said before, not all problems are the same, and not everyone feels these problems the same way. African Americans are three times more likely to die from asthma than their white counterparts, and they're twice as likely to get it. It is black and brown communities normally the ones that live in the most polluted areas that are exposed to industries, factories, and so on. Now, the only reason that I was able to talk, to tell you the statistics is because of this thing called environmental justice. Now, I can give a whole lecture about it. I can give a seminar. I can write a book. I, you can even major environmental justice. And you probably won't be able to give me a clear definition because the debate is ongoing. But what I like to say, to make it easy, is environmental justice is just a connection between social and envir environmental pro problems. You kind of get the gist of it. EDF. Uh, EDF is now focusing more on environmental justice, and they're trying to uh, go more global, which is great for someone that's working on clean air because the air knows absolutely no borders. Everything that I did this summer was focused on the theme, on the themes on uh, on environmental justice, which is inclusion, accessibility, and equity. Everything I did, from writing a tweet or trying to reach the right person, had to focus on choosing the right words in order to reach that person. Same thing, translating a website. I want to include, I want to be able to, I want to have everyone access what I'm doing. Now, one of the projects that I worked, that I had the pleasure to work on uh, this summer was uh, with a corner organization called the South Bronx Unite. As you can probably expect, it is in the South Bronx. If you know anything about New York City, you've probably seen something like this. And if you don't know what this is, this is called Little Island. Little Island is a new project that was meant to give, to give New Yorkers a place to go, a recreational area 
to give everyone a chance to just experience the, the, the waterfront. Well, it didn't quite really work like that. The project cost $260 million, and it is located in one of New York's most expensive uh, neighborhoods, Chelsea. Now, I think you know where I'm going with this. The South Bronx should be able to have access to the waterfront. If it weren't for the waste transfer stations, big power plants, printing presses, and warehouses that are kind of blocking their view. Now, these industries by themselves do contaminate a lot, but it is the over a thousand diesel trucks coming in and out of them daily that really do do it for them. The South Bronx is known as the Asthma Valley, where one in five children suffer from asthma. The majority of the people in the South Bronx are either black, brown, or immigrants. I think you know this is a common theme now, and it is because of this environmental justice that we are now that we now know uh, about it. Now, I don't know about you, but one of the problems that I had this summer was how, how am I going to communicate all these problems, and that's not even talking about the science behind this, without seeming too depressing, because this is depressing. Even if we have a win, it doesn't seem that, that big in, that, in the grand scheme of things. But that doesn't mean that there aren't any. EDF recently partnered with the United Nations Environment Program, and they partnered with 33 Latin American and Caribbean countries to create a program to better air quality monitoring and act upon it. They will have workshops that will provide resources on state-of-the-art air quality management strategies, including opportunities to adopt emerging practices into clean air and climate plans for at least 50 quality air quality practitioners from the region. Now, I definitely did not participate in, in all these negotiations. I, that's way above my paycheck, but I was able to see what it meant to the people working on this, people working at EDF and people working at these governments. Now, it is because of those people that I have hope, and it's because of them that I want to keep going. Now, um, um, <laughs> sorry, uh, working on, working on climate, uh, climate communication is tough. Working on any, anything that has to do with the climate is difficult. It seems kind of impossible, but get ready, here comes a quote. It's kind of fun to do the impossible. Walt Disney. <laughs> I want to I wanna finish my presentation uh, with two messages. One is not for you. It's for me, or old Rodrigo, young Rodrigo, the one that, that believed in the three R's. To him, I want to say, keep going. The world is going to keep throwing challenges at you. It's gonna, the world is going to keep fighting its battles. And you have to learn, and you have to grow, and you can make a difference. The other one is for you. And here comes the third and last cliche. I want to issue a challenge. Use your voice. Ask the tough questions. Fight for change. Whenever you go to a new place, ask, how was this built? Who is being benefited? And most importantly, who is not being hurt? Lift your voice and use, and use it to lift the ones that are at the back, the ones that haven't been given a chance yet. We all have the right tools to do this. We all have the tools to make a difference. We just have to do it. Thank you.